So Jesse, what role do you have to play in addressing the issues that we spoke about? So thankfully, my job here uh, at the centre naturally involves me to be um, interactive with people. So I have the ability to reach people of varying um, lifestyles and age groups and backgrounds. So I'm able to positively um, impact people through that. So that's that really for me. What can citizens do? What can they do? Well, for our citizens, you can start uh, with the basic things, which is simply um, reduce, reuse, uh, recycle those uh, three qualities. You can start with that. Um, and just the you know, simple things in life, it's what will really count. So that's what I would recommend people. We kind of think about uh, a big global you know, change and you think it's going to be instant, but it really does start uh, with these small things. So that's what I would encourage citizens to do, these small changes. You, um, yeah, that's the way forward. So Jesse, as you know, we are a youth-led organization and as well a youth-based organization. So we really want to know how can the youth get more involved in terms of both biodiversity, knowledge, partaking in it, as well as is the right nature center. So we live in a time where um, everything is just a click away. So for youth to get involved, it is pretty simple. Um, uh, the ASYD Media Center, we're on uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, on all forms of so uh, social media, and so on many um, other groups and NGOs. So what I would recommend is for people to search those, get involved, but the, the main issue seems to be that it's not um, environmental awareness is not well integrated into our school's um, syllabus and um, so that's the problem with regard to awareness but once awareness is given then the interest is going to be uh, reciprocated and therefore people can play a part. So my message to the youth and anyone who's listening now, 10 years from now or in a distant future is that we continue and we need to do more because we only have one home and that's the one small target. In terms of your organization, the institution we have here, what are some of the things that you want to do in our world to address some of the issues? So the Institute of Marine Affairs is primarily a research institution. So we, we conduct research in the marine and coastal environment, but our research is not it's applied research because it's geared towards advising government on plans and policies. So we would do the research and we would make that research available and we would provide advice so on terms of development plans, policies that pertains to this area of the, um, the country. Um, in addition to that, we do a lot of public outreach and education because we believe that um, when people have knowledge, they're empowered and they can actually contribute to the conservation of our marine and coastal environments. So those are primarily our role. And how do you think more citizens normal citizens can be involved? Well, we need more normal citizens to be involved. We will encourage activities, volunteerism is important to help us um, basically do things like people participate, for instance, in beach cleanup. We've had um, situations where we've had events where we did mangrove restoration um, replanting and we've had volunteers come out and participate. We also, um, one, of, one of the problems we face as well is the introduction of invasive species. So we've had a problem with the lionfish, which is an invasive species that impact negatively on our coral reefs and our fisheries. So we've had our derbies and so forth and we've even had a volunteerism colony event in the Cocoa Reef area because that's a marine protected area. So it had to be organized so that people controlled within the marine protected area. We had people who came out and volunteered to come and help us remove the lionfish from the environment. So um, the other thing that we're promoting or we're encouraging is what we call citizen science. The reality is that we're not going to be out there all the time to see what is happening. So we need people to be observant, to understand and to report. For instance, just last week we had a coral bleaching alert sent out by NOAA. So we put out information to the public and we're saying, you know, if you have people who dive, the dive is in Tobago, the fishes and so on. If you see the coral, the coral bleaching, that's when the coral turn white. Um, and it's usually associated with elevated sea surface temperature. Right? The foremost let us know so that we can go in and do the assessments. So yeah, there's a role for youth and there's definitely a role for people to participate because at the end of the day we all impact our resources. 
So therefore, we all have to be part of the um, solution to conserve. Okay. And is there a way for you to be involved in the actual policy process? Well, through but with most policy process, there's a um, there's the consultation. So, like even when we were developing the integrated coastal food policy, we had pre-policy consultation all over Trinidad and Tobago, and then just recently we had post-policy consultation. And we also had the policy out on the website, and we were asking people to put, to basically send in comments and so on. So you can contribute at that level in terms of the attending the consultation, um, whether written, providing feedback, whether written or otherwise. You know, so there is a rule because again, these policies affect you because right. you're the future, right? right? So you should have a say and you should know how you can contribute. Love, what roles do you have to play in addressing the issues, you personally and your organization? We personally, well, we, and I, what I like about what it is we do is that we are involved on the ground level. So we are involved in directly changing or rehabilitating areas. So our main, one of our major activities is reforesting. So we would go into an area that is degraded, an area that has been burnt or um, ravaged by fire, let's say, mm -hmm. and we would go there and we would try to bring back the biodiversity into the area through the planting of trees. Um, we would do an assessment, see what's native to the area, what grows well there, and we'll also try to introduce food species that would help encourage wildlife back into the area. And through that, I always think of it as a sort of hands-on, we get our hands dirty, we go in there, and we get our hands dirty. So I really like that we are directly involved in that aspect of it. Yes, there's people who are involved in the policy side of it, and that's excellent, but I like the fact that we are out there on the ground and doing the, the, the work. And it's so wonderful um, that you are part of something so grand. And mm -hmm. I would just like to know, CYN would like to know, how can the people get more involved in something like this? How can they address the issues that we just spoke about? Um, I would encourage citizens to get involved through, you don't have to try to do the grand um, gestures, go in parliament and try to argue a bill, which is fine as well, but get involved on the local level. Most community in, communities in Trinidad and Tobago has an active community council, and active community groups. Um, even though they don't have community groups, they have um, NGOs that are in the community that try or engage in uh, works that benefit the environment.